Could everyone please mute yourselves? That way you don't end up the star of the show and you don't want to be. Um, so uh, Larry Sasso is going to share one of his poems with us. This is from a really lovely book that he wrote. Um, poems that focus on the farm where he lives and where his family has lived for three generations. Larry? <clears throat> Picking peppers in the dark, fall impending. Can you hear me? Like a colored lantern, late trimmed for night, the television lights a square of kitchen where chair, rug, dog, book, mug, pipe create a nook for reclamation. Yet, out into the sleeve of the dark, like an arm practiced in the camouflage donning of dusk, uncle runs across the acre of fodder to the home garden near the piled loam beside the river by the alder grove. Our gloves from the afternoon still grip the oak shafts of the wheelbarrow. His boots, slicked with dew, stand by the cold frame marking today's last step, tomorrow's first. Moonlit peppers hang everywhere. Uncle rushes to them, squashes some to the ground, struggling after the flesh, real and green and round. Looking like small human hearts, they throb when picked and warm. They fit the hand as perfect as a traveler's lunch. He eats obscenely of their meat, Gorges on sun and land and a year of rain. Thank you so much. And now Nancy will bring us our scripture reading. Nancy, you need to unmute yourself, please. <laughs> the reading is from Psalm 104. Praise God who creates. Bless the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed in splendor and majesty. You are wrapped in light like a garment, stretching out the sky like a curtain. He lays the beams of his roof loft on the water above, making clouds his chariot, walking on the wings of the wind. He makes the winds his messengers, blazing fires his servants. He established the earth on its foundations so that it never falters. You covered the primeval ocean like a garment. The water stood above the mountains. They flee at your rebuke. They rush away at the sound of your thunders. Mountains rise up and valleys sink to the place you have ordained for them. You have set a boundary they cannot cross. They will never again cover the earth. He causes springs to gush forth into rivers that flow between the mountains. They give water for animals of the field to drink. Wild donkeys quench their thirst. Birds of the sky live beside them and chirp a song among the foliage. He waters the mountains from his heavenly rooms. The earth is satisfied from the fruit of your work. He causes grass to sprout for the cattle and plants for people to, cul to cultivate, produce food from the land. Like wine that makes the heart of people happy, oil that makes the face glow, and food that sustains people. The loftiest trees are satisfied. The cedars of Lebanon that he planted, the birds build their nests there, and the heron builds its nest among the evergreen. The high mountains are for wild goats, the cliffs are a refuge for the rock badger. He made the moon to mark time. The sun knows its setting time. You bring darkness and it becomes night when every beast of the forest prowls. Young lions roar for prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they gather and lie down in their dens. People go out to their work and labor until evening. How numerous are your works, Lord. You have made them all wisely. The earth is filled with your creations. There is the deep and wide sea, 
teeming with numberless creatures, living things small and great. There, the ships pass through. Lovathon, which you created, frolics in it. All of them look to you to provide them their food at the proper time. They receive what you give them when you open your hand. They are filled with good things when you withdraw your favor. They are disappointed, take away their breath, and they die and return to dust. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you replenish the surface of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks at the earth and it shakes. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord with my whole being. I will sing to my God continually. May my thoughts be pleasing to him. Indeed, I will enjoy, rejoice in the Lord. May sinners disappear from the land and the wicked live no longer. Bless the Lord, my soul. Hallelujah. There ends the reading. Thank you. It's a long one. <laughs> Nicely done. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Gladys Tabor was a Southbury, Connecticut resident over my neck of the woods, a columnist and the author of 59 books. She wrote, as August draws to a close, evenings are cool. Autumn is already in the air. The signs are small, but a country eye sees them. The grass no longer seems to grow overnight and need mowing. The peppers begin to turn rosy in the vegetable garden and the tomatoes ripen. The lettuce begins to run out. The silk on the corn is darker too and some of the broccoli show yellow florets in their heads. But the whole garden still bears luxuriously and the squash is all over everything. Grapes turn purple on the vines at the edge of the garden and the apple trees seem to sag with the fruit. Gladys Tabor was born in 1899, same year as my grandmother. Although my grandmother often told people she was born in 1900 because she wanted to be the child of a new century. She ended up having to work an extra year because of that. The Gladys Tabor lived until 1980, and she was famous for her magazine columns, including one called Diary of Domesticity, not a title we would see today, but this was 1937. And then she, her columns appeared in the Ladies Home Journal beginning uh, in 1959 and running through 1967. And then many of her essays were collected into books. So the setting for much of her writing was her home built in 1690 called Still Meadow. It was on Sanford Lane off Jeremy Swamp Road in Southbury. Right now it's just south of I-84. And many of her columns focus on a single month of the year and therefore that month is, is the title of that chapter in the book. So from her chapter in one of her books called August, she wrote, August is hot. Although not with the intense heat of July, now is the time the tide of summer begins to recede in New England. Days are hot, nights are not, as the farmer's almanac says. The country roads have a quiet look for the heaviest summer work is done. Now, they had their share of big storms in the past too, as we are about to experience today. In 1959, Tabor wrote, thunderstorms usually begin with still air and intense heat. Then the black clouds crest on the horizon. They move over the sky in a curving motion. And if they have streamers hanging down, we cover up the chaise lounge get the dogs in and close the upstairs windows. 
Suddenly a kind of night comes over the countryside, laced with lightning. Thunder almost cracks our eardrums, then the rain comes almost like shrapnel. She wrote, I expect we should not like a world of nothing but June, the rose that never let a petal fall, the brook that never sank to an August trickle, the leaf forever green on the maple and lettuce and peas and strawberries always to be picked. Possibly in time, we would have a secret longing for the rugged textures of autumn flowers for the harvested field, for the first cool, lazy flakes of snow. She acknowledged that the world was not all as idyllic as it was at Still Meadow. In 1959, in the height of the Cold War, she wrote, this is a time of anxieties, scary headlines, turmoil. Many people have resorted to tranquilizing pills to get them through the days and nights. A good many parents worry about the nuclear fallout and its effects on their children and their children's children. But I have decided that it is my business to live my life as best I can. In season, we plant. In season, we harvest the crops. In season, we pile the apple logs on the fire. And here at Still Meadow, we try to live every day as if, as if it were a fresh gift from God. The sun shines, the rain falls, the snow blots out the windows still. Birds come as usual, they nest at the same time. And so far as we are able, we help our neighbors, whether they live down the road or in Hungary. We share whatever it is we have, whether it's money or blankets or seeds for planting in some foreign soil. Now Gladys Tabor wrote sometimes directly about her faith in God, her belief in internal life and her congregational church. But more of her spirituality comes through, I think, in the way she saw such beauty and took such inspiration in the everyday things of life. What the author and preacher Barbara Brown Taylor calls the altar in the world. For Tabor, there was holiness in milk glass and flower arrangements in cocker spaniels and Irish setters in music and card games and picnics. She saw the sacred in children and dear friends, in a cup of tea shared, in the first snow peas of the summer, in a swim in a pond on a hot day. She wrote, there is always one moment in a day when I think my heart will break. Such a moment I think all women have and men too, when all the meaning in life seems distilled and caught up and you feel you can never, never bear to leave it. It may be when you turn and look down a blazing autumn road, or it may be when you see your house under great ancient trees, or it may be in the city when you look up at a towering apartment building and see one light and think, that's mine. But there is a moment and all the heartaches and sorrows of your life suddenly diminish and only the fine brave things stand out. You breathe sharp, clean air and your eyes lift to the eternal wideness of the sky. She continued, anybody has moments like this to store up, but some people are too busy adding up their frustrations to appreciate them. And yet all we need is an awareness of this beauty in life to make us richly content. My definition of happiness, she said, is the ability just to garner 
the perfect moments. So this August, this late summer, this year, and in fact, even this day, may all the heartaches and sorrows of your life suddenly diminish and only the fine, brave things stand out. May we appreciate the perfect moments as God's great gifts to us. And may we give thanks as the psalmist did, singing to the Lord as long as we live, singing praise to our God while we have our being. Enjoy every day, indeed, even this day. May it be so. Amen. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Alleluia, alleluia. Thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam, oh, praise him. Oh, praise him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thou rushing wind that art so strong, ye clouds that sail in heaven along, oh, praise him, alleluia. Thou rushing morn in praise, rejoice. Ye lights of heaven, find a voice. Oh, praise him. Oh, praise him. Alleluia. 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 Let all things their creator bless and worship him in humbleness. Oh, praise him, alleluia. Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit, three in one. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him, alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah.